Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with uh, yet another Lenovo thing. We've got a uh, another Think Center product. This is a Think Center M90P model type 3269. This would be a Gen 1 Core i series. This is a small form factor desktop PC, so a little bit smaller than the than the standard configuration. Um, but a good move into taking a look at uh, what, uh, you know, what a, what a I guess, well-designed business PC of this era, you know, 2000, what is it, 14, 15 would have, would have looked like. So uh, here it is, yeah, so this M M90P, uh, front end of the system, you got your standard, you know, grill stuff, you got a multi-burner in here for optical drive, pair of USB ports, power button, front panel connectors for microphone and headset. And then if we take a look at, I want to show here, I just want to show quickly the, the sides and the back. So on the bottom, you've got your little rubber feet uh, for your connections, but you also have them on this side as well. Some rubber feet here, which allow you to be able to set up the desktop on either uh, standing mode or uh, flat mode. And actually, I think the idea was they wanted you to, to do it standing mode because they put the Think Center logo, you know, vertically or horizontally depending on which way you put it then i think they wanted you to set it up like this on your desk um, instead of going flat and underneath the monitor but regardless it could go either way uh, going over to the rear of the system here we'll flip around and you can take a look at the port connectors here so you've got your power plug for your internal power supply we've got some audio port connectors a serial port we also have a vga and a display port connector for our graphics. And then we've got some more USB ports and a gigabit ethernet connection. If we take a look at how to open this system up, it's actually done toolless. So there's a pair of buttons that you put on either side of this. And if you push them both at relatively the same time and hold them in, you can simply flip open the system panel. And then what we'll do is just readjust just the camera here and take a top-down view of the system and take it apart. Now, when I say take it apart, I don't actually mean taking it apart. I just mean in terms of how you can be able to disassemble for servicing purposes. So the first part we do is on the front end here, we have our optical tray and our fan assembly. And that's just light pressure. You pull it away and it's on a hinge and comes right forward. So it's just it's sitting here nice out of the way. We've got our SATA connectors, we've got our front panel connectors, and we've got our system fan. Little, it's a little greasy still. Uh, you've got some toolless design here that you can flick these switches and you could actually pull the system board directly out of the system for quick replacement. As far as connectors go inside, we've got four memory dim slots. Then we have our power supply connectors. Actually, what we should do is remove the hard drive first. So the hard drive is just connected uh, toolless as well. So there's a blue button here. When I push this in, it releases and allows me to take that out of the way. And I'm just gonna put it off to the side here so we can see what else is going on. Power supply, 24 pin connector with, the, with our ATX uh, 12 volt auxiliary. So it's a standard system board and a standard power supply. We've got our panel connectors here. We've got three SATA ports, which I'm not sure why I need three SATA ports when I don't actually have room to install an additional disk drive, and this power supply doesn't have any additional power connectors, so that's interesting, but whatever. And then I've got a PCI and a uh, PCIe connector available here, would both be low profile. So you might install something like a PCI Wi-Fi card that's low profile, and then that PCIe connector, maybe I would have a low profile graphics adapter if I needed something a little bit more powerful than the integrated graphics, the integrated Intel HD graphics that would have come on this Core i series processor, which when we get booted up, we'll see which one it is. I, I, don't, I think it might be the uh, 650, but I, we'll see when we get plugged in. Um, on panel, uh, uh, on connectors on the system board, we've got some additional spots here for some USB port connectors as well. So again, what I think happens is this system board is used in multiple form factors. 
So this would be the same system board that's used in this small form factor, as well as possibly a regular tower or desktop form factor, which would have room for some additional ports to be connected on the front and rear of the system. And that would be some where some of those additional things would come from. Yeah, and that's it. Pretty simple in terms of how it's designed, how it's built. There's not a ton of room in here for adding more stuff, but as far as being able to upgrade and add things, uh, or make changes to the system. It's pretty simple to be able to do that and get it back up and running quickly. So let's get this thing plugged in and take a look at uh, booting up into Windows and what's going on the rest of the system. So we're started up here. System fan is pretty quiet. Um, it's a pretty decently sized fan, right? It's a looked like it was a 100 millimeter fan, but it was very, very large fins. So I'm assuming that that would make a fair amount of difference on uh, on this system. So as we're booting up into Windows, um, as I noted, uh, processor wise, this was a Gen 1. So it's a Core i, uh, you know, could have been an i3, i5, i7 that would have been supported in this model. Um, I'm pretty sure this has got an i5-650 in it, but we'll see once it gets going and installed into the system. And that's on an LGA 1156 socket series. Uh, DDR3 memory. Um, so that's good, right? Getting <laughs> a little bit faster memory capacity. Four DIMM slots. Now, it says that the maximum supported memory was 8 gig on this one. I didn't try any 4 gig sticks to see if they work, to see if you could actually get 16 going on this one, but it, it could be possible. A lot of times when you see these spec sheets from the PC companies, they don't tell you what the actual maximum capacity is. It's just like what they've tested and they know works. Um, as far as storage goes, again, you have that one three and a half inch SATA hard drive that's installed in there. You could replace that with a, uh, a SSD if you wanted to. There's no M.2 or anything. This is before that was a standard on, on systems, obviously. Um, as far as graphics goes, you've got your Intel integrated uh, HD graphics that would be part of that. When then we have the PCIe slot, so you could possibly add in a low profile uh, video card to be able to add some graphics performance, maybe like a, I don't know, like a GT 710 or a GT 730, or I think I even saw now there's a, there's a low pro GT 1650 that you can get um, for newer graphics cards. I don't know if that would actually work on an older system like this. And uh, I, I would assume that it probably doesn't. You'd need to go with like a seven, uh, 700, 800, or maybe even 900 series card that would, you know, possibly still be able to work on a, on a system of this age. Okay, let's open up the task manager and just take a quick view at what I'm actually going to be including when I get this system donated. So yes, I was this time actually correct. This is a 650. So that is a two core, four thread. We got that 3.2 gigahertz processor uh, that it can go to. It's only running quite low right now, obviously. Memory wise, we have those two two gig sticks. That's four gig of memory. There is some future upgradability. We can add another two two gig sticks for a total of eight gig of memory. And then we have this 500 gig hard drive installed in the system as well. So a pretty decent setup uh, for a standard desktop computer that will be able to help somebody out. Uh, very happy to be able to get these old machines donated from, from businesses in the area and, and other users in the area who have, have old machines that they're no longer using. Instead of it going to the scrap pile, it gets a second life at someone's home or in a community center or something like that. So really happy that that is the case here. And of course, one more look at the case here before we say goodbye. Uh, as always, uh, thanks very much for watching. And I hope you're staying safe and healthy in these strange, uncertain times. And we will catch you in the next one.